I want to start by apologizing by the fact that I missed an important feature on my last review of Cursor AI, and all of that because of test-driven development. So in this video, I want to cover which feature is that and the problems that it brings to develop .NET code. I want to talk about how was it possible that TDD blinded me and I completely forgot about this feature. And finally, I want to cover some workarounds that you can apply in order to go around those limitations on that feature. And the feature that we are talking about is debugging, a crucial feature for any .NET developer we know. So when I published that video, the first few hours looked extremely promising. It was driving a lot of views. So it means that it was a video that was attracting attention and people were eager to know what this thing is, what is cursor. But eventually I start getting the first comment saying, hey, you missed something. Debugging is not a thing if you are using .NET in cursor. Yeah, that was the problem. I didn't touch the point of debugging. That is a crucial feature when you are developing .NET code. That, that is true. And what's the problem? Cursor has debugging in place. You can use debugging. But in .NET, we have a problem. The .NET debugger can only be used by Microsoft IDEs or code editors. So unless it's Visual Studio or VS Code, the editor is not licensed to run the debugger. That means that when you try to start the debugger through cursor, you will get an error. So you might ask, how is that possible that we have other IDEs like JetBrains Rider and we can debug with them? Because JetBrains put the work to build a debugger for .NET code. And this is a huge problem in the, the days that we are living because we all assume that .NET is open source any theory it is, but how is it possible to build a language, a framework, and open source everything, but then when we want to build a debugger, you still need to run the code inside of the IDE made by Microsoft. That doesn't make sense. But does that mean that isn't possible to debug your .NET code using cursor? No, that's not the point. We still have a way to do it. There's some workarounds that we can apply so we can develop our .NET code and also debug it. But we will touch those later. First, I want to explain how was, was it possible that I completely forgot about talking about this. As you might know, I practice test-driven development. That means that most of the code that I will be building, I will be writing it through tests. So I'll first write my test, then write the code and try to make the test go green. In small steps, small increments, small changes, so I always know that if something went wrong, I know what's the thing that is going wrong. One thing that I will tell you, and for sure if we have discussed this with someone else that practices TDD, or if you practice TDD, you know this for a fact, is that once you start practicing TDD frequently, Eventually, you don't run your debugger as much. I can go months without starting the debugger. So I got to a point where I only start the debugger if there's something happening that I'm not aware of what is going on. So it's something strange, and I really need to dig deeper, set the breakpoint, and see something. But I don't use it as a daily tool. I use it maybe every few months. Okay, It's quite rare. That means that in my normal development flow, I don't need the debugger, to be honest. So what I usually do is that I write my tests, run .NET tests, and eventually I will run the .NET run, and never came to mind that I have to try cursor to run the debugger, okay? I should know that. That is true, I'm human, and yeah, so I think I have an excuse. The thing is, in fact, if once I start seeing those comments, I tried it, it doesn't work as it was expected, but I never thought about it. If normally I didn't do TDD in my day-to-day, -day, I would spot this right out of the gate. So, sorry, I, I need to apologize for that. So if you have watched that review, you might have built some expectations and then you try to use it. And it might not be the best experience for you if you normally use your debugger daily. 
But does that mean that you can't debug your .NET code if you use cursor? No, that's not the answer. There's ways to get there and let's go through them. There are some workarounds that you can have in your day-to-day -to, -day to debug the .NET code. And I did the extensive research trying to find the multiple options that we could use to overcome this problem. So the first one, an obvious one, and dumb one, and one that I'm, I don't want to suggest, but I need to say it, you can always have VS Code side-by-side -side with um, Cursor, and if you need to debug it, you can always jump to VS Code and do it. But yeah, that, that's not ideal, okay? For someone like me that only runs the debug eventually, so if in case I need and it's quite rare, it might be enough. I already have the VS Code installed, I have Rider as well, so if I need in some case to, to do it, I can do it. But that is not a, a proper workaround to suggest. What can you do instead? So the first thing that is important to say is that while you can't use that debugger by Microsoft because only licensed products can use it, by the way, there's an open issue on GitHub that I will link in the description. Please go there and make some noise. Let's try to change this. We need to bring the community to discuss this, to ask for this, to open the, the debugger, because this doesn't make sense at all. It's not just a question of cursor. If someone wants to build a new IDE, will suffer with this problem. If you use something like NeoVim or something like that, you have to fight with this type of problem. And this is not correct when Microsoft says that .NET C Sharp is open source. So we need, as a community, we need to push for, for this. So let's go there, let's put some thumbs up, write a comment, do whatever you can. But what you should know is that in fact, there's an open source debugger for .NET. It's not the one by Microsoft, but is an attempt of building one that was made by Samsung. Samsung has created a, an OS that is the Tizen OS. And as you might know, Samsung uses a lot of c -sharp code. So they took advantage of this cross-platform way of building things that Microsoft has built, and they are applying it and using Tizen for it. And in the process, they had to build a debugger because they couldn't use the one by Microsoft. So they came up with this debugger that the name is Netcore DBG. You can find it on GitHub. The problem is that this debugger is not as well packaged as the ones by Microsoft. So it's not as easy as plug and play. But there's some ways to use it. And now can you do it? So let's first cover Windows. If you are in a Windows machine, Likely, it will be quite trivial to do it. Why? Cursor is a fork of VS Code. So you can install VS Code extension. And the brave soul, Muhammad Sami, he packaged the debugger inside of a VS Code extension that you can install. However, the extension is not available through the normal way of installing extensions in VS Code. What you need to do is to go to the website open-vsx.org that is an open registry for extensions for VS Code and there you can download the extension. Once you download the extension, you can go to your VS Code or in this case into Cursor. By the way, this is something that you can apply to other code editors that are built on top of VS Code. So once you download that file, you can open cursor and using the command uh, window, you can search for installing extensions through the VSIX file. Once you pick the file, it will install the C-sharp debugger. That means that now you just need to configure your launch.json file and your task.json file. With those two in place, now you can set the breakpoint, run it, and you can now use the debugger inside of Cursor, which is pretty cool. However, if you don't use Windows, if you use something like macOS, like I do, it might not be as easy as this. 
The debugger by Samsung is not built thinking about the silicon devices that uh, Apple has been building recently, so it might not work out of the gate. The good news is that there are some ways to do it, but they are too hard to do it. Okay, they, they are not simple. Uh, I will link in the description a guide that someone pulled out on a process to get there. But that will mean that you need to grab the code of the debugger, compile it in your machine, and then you can do some configuration in your machine so this extension can start using the debugger that you compiled in OSX. So as, as you can see, we have a workaround. You can do it, but it's hard. It's not ideal. The ideal thing would be to use the debugger by Microsoft. But for that, we need to push them to change this, okay? And I want your help for that. Please go to that link and make some noise. And if you are watching this video, but you still don't know what this cursor thing is, you still have time to go watch this video right here, my recent review, because I promise you that you'll be extremely impressed by cursor.